Is it your first time visiting Disneyland Paris? Or your first time in a long time? Or maybe it's just the first time that someone's put you in charge of planning it. Either way, you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now, but don't worry, I'm here to help you after many Disneyland Paris trips with my top 10 tips for first time visitors. Check it out. Right, tip number one, and I think this is very important, don't panic. If you're someone who's watching YouTube videos on Disneyland Paris, you've probably looked at other things, you've read blogs, you've been onto Facebook groups, and you've probably started to think, oh my goodness, there's so much to know, there's so much to plan in advance and do. The truth is, you could turn up tomorrow and have an amazing time. All the extra bits, the dining reservations, and the premier access and all that those are just cherries on the cake just know if you've booked your holiday you're already set to have an amazing time but we still need to talk about the details so here goes right the next thing on my list i'm not even going to call a tip because it's just kind of something boring that you need to know these days ever since they reopened after the national lockdowns they've implemented a park reservation system so you have to reserve your place in the park you might already know this generally if you've booked a package through disney you don't it's included and implied in your hotel stay if you have bought dated tickets you don't but if you've bought undated tickets or you're going on annual passes or you're staying off site you have to reserve your days in the park. Now this seems to be changing in many, many ways along with your health passes and all that kind of thing every fortnight. I'm not your mother, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what you need to do, but I'm just warning you, go online, check with your travel agent, make sure you've got your park reservation booked because it would be the worst thing in the world and I don't want it to happen that you turn up at the gates and they won't let you in because you haven't got your park pass. Check the details. Right, now we can go on some fun stuff. So, tip number two for real this time, download the app. It amazes me how many people go and they don't download this app. It's got most things that you need to plan your holiday on there. First of all, it's got an interactive park map, which is really important. You can see the wait times on there, so you're gonna need it when you're in the park. You can check menus, opening times, what's down for refurbishment. There's a, a calendar on there that tells you park opening times on certain dates, what's closed for refurbishment on certain dates. There's links to book your dining, links to book your park passes. There's loads. Just go on there and have a little nosy around because it will do a lot of the work for you. And thrillingly, that takes me on to tip number three, which is my favourite, and that is treat yourself to a virtual park day before you go. Now, I do this all the time. What you do is you settle yourself down. You maybe get your cup of tea and you get your app out. Where am I going? You get your app out and you load it up and you go onto the map and then you just imagine that you're entering the park and you walk through. You walk onto Main Street and you have a look what shops are there. Where might I want to get a snack before I go on to some rides? Are there some toilets nearby? Because little Flossie might need the toilet when we get in. And you have a little look round and you have a virtual walk through. And then you can look at the wait times at certain times of day. And you might think to yourself, oh well, my mate that I'm going with will want to ride Tower of Terror, but I won't. What's nearby that I can do while they're doing that? And just have a look. Because if it's your first time visiting, you don't know what you don't know, is my thinking. And once you've done that walkthrough, you might come up with some solid questions. You might be like, do I need tickets for that show? Is the way I can reserve space to watch that parade? What time is that on? When does that open? And you can just do it on your virtual park day. And you know what? We do these virtual park days every so often on our podcast where myself and my co-hosts, Hugh and Chris, take it in turns to say what we're doing next, where we're going to go, we have a look on the app. It's loads of fun. And every time we've done it, it's been slightly different. And anticipation is half the pleasure. Let's admit it. So, I'm going to go on to tip number four now. Use early magic hours early. If you are an on-site guest, that means you're staying at one of the Disney-owned hotels in walking distance of the park, including Davy Crockett Ranch, which is a short car drive away, then you're entitled to get into the park, both parks, 
an hour before other visitors. This is really good because it is the quietest time of day. They don't have all the attractions and shops open. They tend to have a good selection in Fantasyland and a good selection in Discoveryland only. Now, this is the time you want to bang out rides. I say use it wisely because I do not recommend you use that precious hour queuing for coffee or taking photos in front of the castle. You've got all day to do that. You use that hour and go straight to the big attractions. I'm thinking Princess Pavilion. The only time we ever do Princess Pavilion is when we rope drop early magic hours. And when I say rope drop, that is literally they let you into the park, but they keep a rope across the entrance to Fantasyland and then bang on half past eight, they drop the rope and everyone runs in. We get there for half past eight to get at the front of the queue with Princess Pavilion because by the time the park opens at half past nine, it will easily be 75 minutes most days. Other attractions, Peter Pan doesn't always open with early magic hours, however, you can be hovering near the entrance to it so you can be the first people in the queue when it does open with the park at half past nine and quite often it will open at ten past nine you know knowing that they want to get people into that queue so it's a good chance to get there for that we like to go to buzz lightyear in early magic hours which is like an interactive game ride and we like to ride it two or three times back to back and try beat each other's score. Now later in the day you'd struggle to do that because the queue would be too long. So make sure you're really making the most of your early magic hours. To recap, go to a high wait time attraction and get there first and then after that go and hover near another high wait time attraction to be first in the queue when it does open. This isn't just the Disneyland Park either, it also counts towards the studios and in that park I would recommend that you get on Tower of Terror in early magic hours and then get close to the entrance of either Ratatouille or Crush if neither of those are in early magic hours. You can check which attractions are available in early magic hours on a poster in your hotel and usually it's also at the entrance of the park you can see. Now once you've done those early magic hours I'm going on to tip number five and that is ride the big rides either very early or later in the day. So let's talk about Big Thunder because that's not traditionally in your early magic hours. My advice would be if it's an important ride to you to rope drop Big Thunder, get straight there early in the day, get it out of the way and it's done. But if you can't get there within the first 15, 20 minutes of the day, that queue gets long very, very quickly. I would then wait till mid-afternoon or evening when it tends to drip off a bit. You can also get Disney Premier Access, which is paid for fast passes, but I'm not going to be touching on those in this video. If you want me to talk about those, just put a comment down below and I'll make a separate video. Other rides that might have those long queues quite quickly, so you need the early or late tactic, are Tower of Terror, Crusher's Coaster, Ratatouille, Autopia, Space Ma Hyperspace Mountain. I wouldn't say Pirates of the Caribbean because where it can get long queues, it tends to ebb and flow quite a lot during the day. So just keep your eyes on the app for that one. And the general rule, if you are crowd averse, as I am, is do what everybody else doesn't. So tips with this include shopping in the morning, the trend generally is that people rush in, they go for the rides and the excitement, then they have the dinner and in the afternoon they'll go to the shops on Main Street. So that can get quite crowded, sort of 1 or 2 p.m. My recommendation is to do the early magic hours and then maybe shop at 10 or 11 a.m. when the shops will generally be quite a bit quieter. Similar uh, tactics are to eat at off hours. I would either go for dinner at half past 11 or half past two. I wouldn't want to be queuing up at half past 12. I actually talk about this at length in my 16 top tips for Disney dining at Disneyland Paris. So I'll put that up in the corner and you can check that out too. And then this one is a little less consistent, but there can be a lull in crowds between kind of 5 p.m. 
and 7 p.m. in the summer. When the parks open late till 11 p.m., a lot of people will leave the park at five to go back to the hotels, to refresh, to have the dinner, before coming back ready for the fireworks. So you can get a bit of a lull in the crowds at that time if you stay in the parks. This doesn't really work in the winter when the parks close at seven or eight. People tend to just go for the long haul, but it's a good tip for the summer. And the final tip in do what everyone else doesn't is if you are not going to watch the parade, make sure you ride rides during the parade because everybody else will be distracted. So you might get on a bit quicker. Talking of parades, let's go on to tip number seven. And that is prepare for entertainment early. Now this has got two things. You've got the fireworks and parades and hub and castle shows. And then you've got theatre entertainment such as Mickey and the Magician in the studios and Rhythms of the Pride Lands at the Frontierland Theatre. Now let's take the theatre shows first. These have got limited capacity, it's a theatre, there's only so many seats and they do fill up regularly. So what you might find is that you turn up at 20 to 2 for a 2 o'clock showing and the queue is so long that you're now queuing for the three o'clock show. Things fill up that much. So you're often queuing for the show after the show, which means you're in for really long waits. To avoid this, I would go for the first showing of the day because entertainment tends to be something that other people like to do later in the day. Make sure you check the times of the performances and still arrive at least half an hour to 40 minutes before the show time starts. And then, I would come prepared with a drink and a snack and a game to play in the queue. It's that simple. There's often not getting around it, but if you know it's going to happen, you can take it on the chin and enjoy the experience of queuing. If you arrive there thinking you're going to walk straight into a theatre, you're going to get the grumps. Another reason I like to do that earlier in the day, I don't know about you, but standing still on tired feet is really uncomfortable. Uh, walking on tired feet, you tend to be able to grin and bear it, but for some reason that really makes my legs ache. Whereas if you go earlier in the day, you tend to be able to queue with a bit more of a cheerful face. Right, so then preparing for the entertainment early, fireworks and parades. Stake your claim on your space early. I do recommend everyone see the parade if, if it's your first time. It's a glorious thing to behold, but people get very territorial. People line the route really early. If it's a three o'clock parade, have a look. Decide where you're going to stand. We like to stand opposite Bella Norte uh, near Small World because you get to see the parade as it first comes through with Small World there and you get to see the castle there so you get the best views from both angles. Other people prefer Main Street, it's up to you. But decide where you're going to stand. Again, get a drink and a snack. And I like to have a bit of a picnic blanket in my bag. Lay it down, sit on it and stay there. That's what you're going to do to see the parade. I don't want this to sound grim. We enjoy these little quiet moments of our holidays, but you won't regret it if you get a good spot. Now, the fireworks is a bit different because people do state the claim for hours beforehand and then inevitably after you've stood there for hours waiting, somebody really tall will just wander in front of you and ruin it anyway. So we, we don't do this for fireworks. We just find it makes it more annoying. We tend to rock up a little bit late for the fireworks, stand closer to the back, be a bit tactical with standing in front of Plaza Gardens. There are trees but it means that there's fewer people there so you can kind of get to an angle where you can see the castle. I personally wouldn't recommend staking your claim, I don't think it's worth it. Up to you, pack your patience. So with all these talks of long queues, running madly from park to park, I really need to add my tip number eight, and that is look after yourself. Make sure you're fed, make sure you're hydrated, and take rests. And I would say you should make this your first priority over all the other things, over which attraction you're going to do next, or you know whether or not you're gonna be there for the parades. You won't enjoy any of it if you're grumpy. Now I take a little tiny care kit in my park bag. Hang on, theme's the Polynesian, do you like it? 
really cool. Anyway, so in here I have like plasters, I have Compede blister plasters, I would really recommend those. I've got a hand cream and lip balm, some painkillers, safety pins, you know, just little things, nothing too massive because I don't like carrying around big bags that make me uncomfortable. I'm also planning on doing a What's In My Part Bag video, so keep tuned for that one. Subscribe and then you'll know when it's up. Um, so take things like that and a big bottle of water, refill it regularly, make sure that you're set up for snacks, just look after yourselves. And there's nothing wrong with spending your park time resting. People think that because they've paid so much money for it, they have to be busy every single second. There are some beautiful places in Disneyland Paris to sit and people watch and relax and listen to the background music. And that is time well spent. Trust me. We're getting towards the end now. Tip number nine, plan ahead for food. Now, again, I've done this long video on my 16 top tips for dining in Disneyland Paris. Keep mentioning it, don't I? And one of the things is to check the opening times, to book ahead. And I recommend having a little look at the menus, particularly if you've got picky eaters. You don't want to get to the point where everyone there is, everyone in your group is really hungry and you look at, you go to the closest place and it's shut and then you go to the next place and, but they only serve Mexican food and someone in your party doesn't like spice and make sure you know what's there. That all goes with your virtual park day. But whereas I don't think it's necessary to book ahead, Having half an idea where you want to eat just saves arguments and it saves stress. And right, my last tip, and this comes right from the bottom of my heart when I tell you this. Don't forget to see the magic and be the magic. Now, what I mean by that is, oh, there's beautiful details everywhere. Things you wouldn't believe. There's hoof prints in the pavement. There's sculptures at the top of the buildings. There's music playing everywhere you go and the music changes. The foliage changes. Make sure you notice that because we can get so caught up in it. We can feel so pressured and rushed and stressed and if you're taking children with you there's a thing going on with them and don't forget to see how magical the place that you are in is and also how geared towards you enjoying yourself it is that's why the characters are there waving at you that's why the um horses are going up and down main streets to make it magical for you so make sure you savor that and then when i say be the magic remember there will be thousands of other people there as well who are all hot and tired and perhaps uh, the feet ache and they're a little bit grumpy don't add to other people's stress by pushing in on cues and tutting an eye rolling at them and things everyone's human and humans are difficult you go in wet there with the same magical attitude the cast members do maybe you can spread a little pixie dust as you're leaving you might want to give the balloon you've bought to another child rather than take it home in the car if you've got some stickers and you've got too many give them to another family you never know you might make their holiday so i really think as someone who goes to Disney parks a lot, it's so important to carry that with you to make sure that you're the magic as well. So that's a bit of a soppy end, isn't it? But it's something that I truly believe. That's everything I've got. Some of them are quite simple and I'm going to go into more details with them on other videos. I've done a lot of videos on, on DVC and, um, you know, trip updates and packing and I've done vlogs in the park. But I think that I'm just going to do a little series of these tip videos because I'm really enjoying thinking about them. So I've got some planned that include the park bag that I mentioned. I think I'm going to do a secret spots in Disneyland Paris. So if you're interested in any of those, make sure you subscribe. And also don't forget that we do a weekly podcast. It comes live on YouTube at half past eight every Sunday. Or you can catch it on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you like to listen to podcasts. So thanks very much for spending this time with me and I'll hopefully see you soon.